Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation Game Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching a quarantine conversation where we're discussing uh, a lot of things surrounding quarantine and what have quarantine done for each and every single one of us. This video features me, Brother Nate, Brother Javé, Brother Josh, and Brother Emmanuel. See you guys in the next clip. I'm even looking at how people praise. I'm even looking at Mike Todd. I don't know if y'all follow Mike Todd's ministries. It's so interesting. Sometimes the parallel. This man can be praised for something so powerful and how he presents his message. But I remember last last week or two weeks ago, some of these some some sisters wasn't happy because he's talking about the silhouette challenge. He's talking about how we should handle. But I hate how these men think they can define our bodies and how we can listen. Yeah. Listen, that's another conversation. That's another discussion. But you see how the tide can change, or sometimes if you get distracted by it, your mindset can get so rippled. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Don't veer off. Don't veer from the truth. Don't 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 turn away. Don't run away. You know, um, know what the truth is, and know know Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life. So if it's not if it's not His way, and I, I know we know this, you know, mm -hmm. but I love what Javé did. Let's let's explore this deeper because sometimes what we are holding on to is is based in society or something that was said in the last two years. And it's so easy to cling on to what was said in the last year or so because. We're entering the year of being in this pandemic on a global scale. And there's a lot of things that's been said that shake people faith. And I'm, I'm, maybe I'm so stern like this because we just talked about it in prayer before I came to the room that you, know, you have to be more anchored now more than ever. Um, not just because we entered a year of this global affecting pandemic, but you don't know what's going to come up out the rubble after this. So you that's have true. to be that much more anchored. Your school system's not going to help you to be more anchored. Right. As much as Christians are infiltrating the system, as much as you have great Christian professors, as much as you, as much as you're going to see it, you're going to still see the tension of the world, the satanic mm -hmm. organizational structure or the kingdom war. You're going to see that tension happening mm -hmm. more. But if you're not anchored, it's like, you know, so that you you stirred you stirred me up with that good question, Javi, and that that that, that Yeah, I want to continue. I think it, it's it's outside the four walls too, that we can't just be anchored to the church. Because sometimes I, I think we're anchored to the culture of the church. Mm -hmm. and not just, not necessarily the, the anchor of the word, right? Right, mm -hmm. anchored in Christ, yeah. It's important that we, we know the truth because often we, we take the church and what the church puts out. I'm not saying, not no condemnation against the church, of course. I'm just saying, we have to know it for ourselves, right? That what the truth is for ourselves and be anchored in the word, right? Not necessarily mm -hmm. the church. And if we're anchored in the church, then we'd be swept away because of this whole pandemic. It ain't no church like usual, right? We're on Zoom mm -hmm. all thing now. So if we were anchored to the church, we'd have been swept away. But if we're anchored to the word and we know what our truth is, then, then come what may, right? Mm -hmm. We'll be able to stand, right? Because we know what that truth is. We, we know what that standard is. Or who that standard for truth is. Yeah. Being anchored in Christ is key because there's a lot of people that are religiously anchored to the scripture, not mm -hmm. for being the life giver as well. Not not downing anything that I've saying because this is our map. The, the scriptures are our map. The person mm -hmm. is Christ. The scriptures are our roadmap. Right. The scriptures are the roadmap. But some people have religiously anchored themselves to the book that they miss God. Yeah. And you know some people that have that same thing, you know. Um, or like what Javé was saying, anchored to church culture. I, I'm so glad, at least in the Afro-Caribbean Afro diaspora, I'm so glad that the pandemic has come because it's forcing us to, to, to deal with how anchored we really were in Christ or how anchored we were in church culture or anchored we were in our ethnic church definition culture. I yep. You know, two years ago, two, three years ago, I saw this thing. I'm like, nah, if we, and, and I'm just speaking of the Afro-Caribbean -Caribbean church diaspora. If we don't evolve, we, we are going to enter a, a, a season. And, and I, 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 want, I want to say it by prefacing this, the bride of Christ, the, church, the bride of Christ is never going to be obsolete. But I'm talking about the culture, the influence, um, how we go on our message will become obsolete. Sometimes on the organization, even on an organization level, because we've held on to church culture ideals versus really anchoring ourselves in the person of Jesus Christ. And then we also got to confront 
the reality, as you were saying, Javi, we're, some of us are anchored in church ideals. We're anchored in church politics. We're anchored in church polity. And this pandemic kind of, you could see the shake rattling rolling <laughs> in a lot of senses if you don't if you don't posture yourself to hear from God. My so, favorite though, bro, and, and thinking about that, um, is, is is I feel like some, and generally speaking, we're, we're waiting for this thing to pass, and and if we're not careful, we would just return to the same method, the same thing we were doing before, mm-hmm. um, and, and so I think individually but collectively um, we have to learn what it is that God is saying to the church right those that have ears to hear let them hear right and we have to really position ourselves to hear what it is that Christ wants us to do how he wants us to pivot and, and, and change because I, I I really feel that bro that we're just waiting for this thing to pass until we get the okay to resume as normal and as a result we're gonna go back to church as normal so, so that's something I, I think about. That. What, what, what do we do in, in this season? Individually, collectively, how do we respond? What is it that, that Christ is saying um, for us to do? Again, individually and collectively. So that, that's, that's one of my fears when I think about that as a whole. Um, just us waiting for this thing to pass so we go back to how it used to be. That, that it's really a dangerous thing because before quarantine, I was already seeing that we stuck in the same mindset as a church. And I was already not liking it. So I I was glad I had my platform where I, I make my own decisions. I put out the content I want to put out and focus on the more important things. Let's talk about real topics. Like, let's not just focus on the church. Let's focus on real, like real issues and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then during quarantine, I'm glad that a lot of the stuff got, like, exposed, like, we got to deal with this. We can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing that. Uh, especially, like, with my church, uh, we was able to, like, just talk about uh, a lot of things that we need to fix because we just can't uh, keep on doing that. We're just stuck in the same – we're just stuck in our same ways, and if we don't move, we're going to we're gonna be stuck. And like you said, um, Brother Nate, that a lot of us want this quarantine to pass over. Mm-hmm. I don't um, – for the sake of people dying and stuff like that, yeah. But other than that, I don't. Because I've seen how much I've learned, how much I've grown during quarantine. I, I don't know about everybody here, but quarantine... You don't want the lessons that you're learning to pass. You just want... Yeah, you don't want the lessons that you're learning to pass. Got you. Got yes. you. Got you. Yes. Because it's so much things that I learned during quarantine. I learned that... I learned that I'm emotionally scarred. And I have a lot of trauma, a lot of hurt and pain that I never dealt with. Because I was growing up in a uh, Caribbean household. Dealing with whatever you got going on was not taught to me. Mm-hmm. Like, identifying certain things were not taught to me. So I didn't know. So when I was able to just sit down, I'm like, all right, I still suffer from this. Uh, I do deal with um, PTSD from some stuff. I ain't going to get into details about that. But That's okay. Stuff. But it just really got me thinking like the reason why I'm stuck in the same place is because I'm still holding on to this. I'm still holding on to that. I'm holding on to her, all that hurt and pain that I experienced from bullying. I'm holding on to what this person did. I'm holding on to what that person did. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like I got like eight posters around me and I'm trying to hold eight posters with two hands. How you going to try to hold eight posters with two hands? Mm. Like that's, I feel like that's exactly where I'm at right now. Each of those eight posters represent a significant moment or something that just happened in my life that I just keep on holding on to. And if I don't let go of them, I'm going to break my hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to break my hands and I won't be able uh, to use it. But I, I just love what quarantine taught me. And yeah, I, I just became a grind more because I was taking YouTube serious before quarantine and just taking out uh, making a Christian content serious. But I, was t- I wasn't taking it as serious. Mm-hmm. I was not taking it as serious. And once I started to do it, once I started there, because I was very inconsistent. Like, I post, like, this week, post three weeks later, probably a month, two later, like, just being very inconsistent, and I can't do that. So once <laughs> once I recognized that, uh, I did. Because the, the first video I did, it was uh, that video I did with Brother Jalen, Dusty Bibles. From that video to now, I have not missed a video. I've been going straight for 40 weeks. No miss, no up, no miss or upload. 
Friday videos, Saturday videos. We going straight. I'm not miss. I refuse to miss a upload. And I just got that that grind and passion to not only get the word out, but to deal with my personal issues. And we, and if you haven't looked at your personal issues, um, to everybody here, uh, during quarantine, look at your personal issues. We all got a lot of things. Cause Javi, you was raised by Caribbean parents. I'm pretty sure you probably deal with the same thing. Brother Nate, you was raised by a Caribbean parents. The same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh, you was raised by a Caribbean parents. I'm not sure about you, Emmanuel. Were you raised by a Caribbean parents? Afro, Afro Caribbean dynamic, uh, man. Honestly. Yeah, well, Dominican Republic and my dad's yeah. African. Basically, yeah, Afro, they count. They count Afro, as Caribbean. Afro Caribbean yeah. dynamic. Yeah, that's what we have here. Afro Caribbean dynamic. Yeah. yeah. And we we just we we all just got to just. We need help. <laughs> We all need definitely. We don't, we don't need the quarantine. The quarantine, I think, I think quarantine was kind of synonymous with isolation. And mm-hmm. sometimes, I mean, sometimes you have a, as a young kid, probably have a summer where you just um, you don't go anywhere. It's not like the quarantine like you can't go anywhere, but you just have a summer where you're just at home or you're or you're doing something. And I think quarantine could, could kind of be a, something called like a um like a quiet place. Just taking that time. To, to consecrate yourself some people have been in isolation before quarantine you know they've been homebodies before quarantine so it's just a matter of what are you doing in that in that in that quiet space what are you doing in that time of isolation are you using that time to, to beat yourself up and say oh i'm not this or i'm not that or are you using that time to to uh, to draw closer to god and to, just to communicate with others like we're doing right now like we can't see people uh probably physically um, but we're just we're just coming in together and we're talking and you know we're we're breaking bread and it's just a matter of just having that bot that that balance. You don't want to be so isolated that you don't talk to nobody. You're not accountable to anybody. But sometimes it's good to take that isolation to get into a quiet place with God and hear what He wants to say to you and uh, where He wants you to go. All right. Yeah, I would definitely say 2020 and quarantine in general. I think for everyone caused a lot of self reflection. Right. Um, the body of Christ and us individually. Um, but kind of like just like piggybacking off of what Ezron was saying, it really caused us to look inward, you know, what do I have going on in my life? What am I dealing with? And a lot of people did not live through that reflection, right? From a mental health standpoint, suicide statistics skyrocketed um, from quarantine from that year in general. Um, and it's crazy to think about. So it definitely, it it just shows that it's really important that we take the time to reflect and we take the time to, you know, ask the Lord to show us things within our heart, within our mind that we need to get fixed, uh, situations we need to get fixed, things within ourselves we need to look for help for. I mean, obviously it's a whole other conversation in itself, but like um, counseling, stuff like that, you know, the stigma that comes around, comes around having a therapist and stuff like that. Like these are definitely conversations that need to be had. So that's on an individual level, but I would say as far as, the body of Christ, um, I think it also caused us to reflect because it's like, we're so used to being in the church to all that stuff. And then we're now home, or at least we were home. Now we can do different things. But once mm-hmm. we had to go into that quarantine, I think it really raised the question, like, is my relationship with God, is my worship to the Lord contingent on the building, contingent on the building where I go to church? And obviously nobody, nobody wants to think that it is, but if you put it in perspective, every Sunday you're lifting your hands, you're excited for church, and then you have to be home and you're just chilling out. You spend no time with the Lord. It kind of makes you think that your relationship is contingent on the building that you're going to. Um, and that's definitely something I would say is beneficial as far as it's something I learned um, with last year, because it really made me dive in to time with God intimately, um, personally, between me and him. And there's something really powerful in that. But that's just something I wanted to share. So. That was a good, that was good. Because I think that's one of the things, I think what it is, um, too, as you were saying that, Josh, like one mm-hmm. thing that stuck out to me is that we can hide behind the facade of having community because there's even a stigma of having genuine community. Right. Um, and it's not about the building dynamic. And it's not, because I, I, I've always, one of the things I was wrestling with was like, were we really being the organic bride of Christ pre-pandemic anyway were we really being the community that was always hungry for him were we always the community that that in every asset um aspect of our life excuse me every aspect of our life 
we're tr- trying to have God lead, you know, mm. those things got conf- confronted for real. And I mm. think us as brothers, um, African-American, Afro-Caribbean brothers, we had to have conversations about, boy, do I really matter in the lens of this world? How do I, mm-hmm. how, how do I change the narrative for the sake of my son, my children, my daughters, um, when that time comes? You know, how do I occupy until Christ returns? You know, how do I occupy until he called me home? Whichever of the two. How, 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 how am I looking at the word? How am I, you know, how, you know, these introspective questions aren't bad to have because you know what it is? You actually find out that, yeah, you are human because sometimes we, the, the church culture will help us to um, hype our facade, hype the mm-hmm. facade that we're good or we're all good because of what we do in the body and what we do in the earth. Oh, this, yeah, he's, he's a, He's a college graduate. He has master's. He's good. He has no problem. Okay, mm-hmm. but when the field that I have my master's or my bachelor's in, or my associates, or or what I'm doing in the body of Christ, or what I do in the community, when that gets pulled, I have to deal with inner me. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we didn't we didn't do enough to deal with inner me. I think that's why I said, yeah, 2020 was definitely a year of clear vision because if you're going to, uh, <laughs> if you're going to really if you're really going to make a difference and be a world changer for the time that God give us, we do have to deal with inner me because mm. there's so much people that has many platforms. Somebody said this this week and it, it, it shook me to my core. There are too many people that are over platform, but underdeveloped. That man, that thing, mm. that, that thing hit, that thing hit. And I was just wow. pondering on the reality so of that, that there are so many people pre pandemic, even with the growing internet content, there's so much people that have content on YouTube, content on Periscope, content on uh, Facebook, content on Instagram, content on Twitter, content, content everywhere. But they have they have so much width, but they have no depth to them. How mm. are you going to talk to me about? How are you going to talk about miracles? And you haven't even read, you haven't really studied the scriptures and studied miracles. How are you mm. going to talk to me about the ministry of the Holy Spirit? And you have no walk with the Holy Spirit. Your walk with the Holy Spirit was based off of the fact that you preach good and you prophesy good one time in a church setting and they gave you certain positions. They gave you certain platforms. I'm not coming for anybody. Believe me. I, 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 Go ahead, if man. Anything, I'm coming for, if anything, I'm, sometimes I'm even coming for me, you know, because I'm like, if I want to handle where God is sending me, I have to deal with enemy. I have mm-hmm. to I have to make sure that the traumas are dealt with. Where I need deliverance. I, if I need deliverance somewhere, I need the some of us, yeah, if we're honest, the last year, some of us need deliverance ministry as well. Not only just counseling, but some of us need mm-hmm. deliverance ministry. Some of us need to cough up some stuff, get some stuff out of our system in mm-hmm. Jesus' name, you know? Some of yeah. us need the authority, the spiritual authority of the things to be broken over us. And then, as you alluded to, Joshua, then we need some Christian therapists and counselors to come up right. because mm-hmm. we need our minds. I, 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 God had me working on a thought, uh, I, I, I'll probably, and in due time, probably sure, just taking back my mind. You know, mm. taking back the mind, because if, if I don't know how to follow and love him with my mind, it's going to manifest in my body. Fear is going to manifest in my body. I'm going to always think right. every time I cough, I might have the coronavirus, so I have pneumonia. I might have something going yeah. on in my physical body. Your mind, your mind is powerful. Your, your soul realm is so powerful. But if it's not yielded to God, it's going to be yielded to what's going on around you. And mm-hmm. some people, I've, unfortunately, have gone before their time because their mind was in such torment. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the, there was never a deliverance from the powers that be that try to overtake the mind. And too yeah. many people has gone before pre-pandemic. Too much people strung out on drugs. Too much mm-hmm. people were already committing suicide. You know, too much brothers. Too much of us brothers were dying in the isolation because we were never taught how to deal with inner me, or we were never taught to get the community that can help you to stay on track. Mm-hmm. We never were. T- we never really had the conversations. We're having the conversations now because what God allowed to happen in 2020 has forced us to have the conversation. It's right. like the book of Acts. The book of Acts, the beginning of the book, why that's my favorite part, especially from like chapter four through nine, is because, okay, Jesus told them one thing in, in John 1. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. You're going to get power to be a witness through all the earth. But when Pentecost happened, most of them stayed in, in Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Then persecution had happened when Stephen got killed at the end of Acts chapter 7. When he got killed, persecution broke out. But here's what also happened. Samaria 
got a second dose of revival because Philip went to preach there. Mm. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have happened if the persecution didn't happen. Mm. If 2020 didn't happen, there would still have been a lot of things, Jave, that we would have been hiding under the crack. There would have been some church polity probably would have been dominant in, in even our current diaspora, church God prophecy. There have been so much things. There's so much things that came to light for me. This is me personally. You know, yeah. all of those, uh -huh. there's so much things came to light and life for me. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, we need, if we're going to survive the next 10 years, they got to fix this and they got to fix this quickly. The culture, there's some things culturally that has to shift, shift quickly. There's some things that God is training our minds and preparing our hearts to do so that when we step into it, we're stepping into it for long, not only just for longevity, but to build leg legacy and to build right. up lives and to build up men and women that will follow Jesus, serve him and be influential wherever God has placed them in the earth. But mm. if, 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 if we didn't have like what happened at the, I feel, this is just me. I felt like the, 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 the end of Acts chapter seven and Acts chapter eight kind of happened with 2020. For many of us that were complacent, there uh -huh. was a, the circumstances caused us to move. Right. Just like with the early church, they needed that circumstance. They needed Stephen stoning to cause some of them to move. You would have never heard of Philip. You would have never seen the conversion of Saul if what didn't happen, happened. Mm. And we see that today. Some people are not going to get saved until what happened last year happened. Uh. So it, 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 everything you're saying, Josh, Jave, yeah, it's for real. Because this stuff, I'm not done on my journey on dealing with inner me, as Ron. Let me tell you, no matter how far you are along in life, bro, you still have to deal with things with inner me. Mm. I'm just praying that the authority and the sting, even over this line, I'm just praying that the sting of what causes your P, um, PTSD from the traumatic experiences growing up in Guyana, I'm just praying that that thing breaks off you, the authority of the thing. Mm -hmm. And then also that what gets, what, what you'll begin to do in the days and months ahead, that you'll begin to surround yourself with people that will help you to grow in the transformation of your mind. That's mm -hmm. what Romans 12 talks about, being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Of your mind. Deliverance, deliverance is the gateway that will get your mind to be transformed and not conforming to the patterns of the world. Deliverance, this, the breaking of the stronghold that will try to hold you strong. That is what God wants. God is, I feel, retraining us to, uh, to deal with so that when people begin to, as we talk about Jave, when we come out of this, we're not going to come back. We're not going to try to go back to form. You can see that wall breaking down, that mm -hmm. the form of godliness. Even when we're going back to church and doing live streams and live recordings, for me, even I was talking to my sis last night, you know, yeah, I know uh, we're doing a virtual this convention, but one thing I've been praying that at the form of the thing, the, the form of the idea, whatever people have clung on to that wasn't Christ, that gets dissipated. Because mm -hmm. if we're going to win my generation back, because now we have to have the conversation about winning my generation back, my peers, we're having a conversation that, if we had kept some things in place, even just 10 years ago, wouldn't have been a conversation. I'm just talking to God, I'm not talking about the kingdom. Because mm -hmm. you can see many of my peers making influence, making strides in the body of Christ. And now, if we're not careful, five years from now, we're going to talk about, oh, we need to win back Jave's generation and win back Manny's genu generation. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. No, no, no. The cycle can break if we get delivered, right. one, but also we transform our minds personally but also collectively, um, mm -hmm. we we need the we need the culture we need the church culture ideas that don't line up with scripture that don't g give credence and language for the future. Those things need to dissipate. Those mm -hmm. things need to those things need to be destroyed because God's not going to get the glory if we're trying to perpetuate an old story. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, 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 no. Say, say that again. Say, please say that again. Please. God's not gonna get. God's not gonna get the glory out of uh, uh, out of a, a story that we're trying to perpetuate out of an old story. God is trying to bring us into new things. God has been trying to get us. A lot of us. A lot of our churches. A lot of. I'm talking about our current context. God's been trying to get a lot of us to come into the new thing. He's not mm -hmm. gonna get the glory out of an old story. A story that expired. An uh. idea that expired. Mm -hmm. Listen. If many of our people were honest, we would just say, listen, many of our churches were birthed out of, idea, out of the idea that we wanted to hold our cultural and ethnic um, Afro-Caribbean ideas. Not that we didn't love God, but we needed an expression. But here's what's happening now. If you know with a lot of Caribbean churches in the last four or five years, 
a lot of my peers left because I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to try and feel like 1975 Jamaica or 1975 uh, Nigeria or 1986 Ga- um, um, Ghana or Guyana. I'm not going to feel like I'm in the 80s when I'm clearly 30 years beyond this. I'm mm-hmm. not going to, I can't let that be my culture because mm-hmm. I'm going to die. One of the things, it's ironic. One of the things that always keep me on the path of growing, not only does the scripture keep going in um, 2 Peter 3, 18, it was the series finale of Boy Meets World, Judge, Judge Ashley Ankles. When Corey went to Mr. Feeney and he said, he asked for advice about his wife moving to New York. He told a story of, his, of a plant that he moved from his house. And mm-hmm. the thing that always sting me, watch the series finale of Boy Meets World. I think, that thing will bless you. He Very said, I had to move, I had to move this, uh, Petunia, I think it was, uh, I forgot the name of the leaf that he was talking about. I had to move from outside. He was like, why? Because it's getting too big? No, because if it stayed in the house, it would have stopped growing. Mm. And sometimes, sometimes, and that's why there's been an exodus. It, uh, you know, Javé could probably attest to it. That's why there's been an exodus for a lot of our peers from our local churches. Not that our people didn't love God, not that our people didn't care about the things of God, but sometimes we have to remember the principle of leadership from John Maxwell. Everything rises and falls on leadership. If we at the top have not committed ourselves to continually growing, and I'm not talking about academically, I'm only mm-hmm. I'm also talking about spiritually. How, how do we handle? We got people, we got pastors and leaders that's never touched the Book of Revelation to teach and mm-hmm. to preach from. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? We 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 got people that that don't don't know how to preach from other books and about. I hate to say it like that. I hate to say it, I'm not, and I'm not saying it to discourage. No, it's good, but bro. just think about it. Just think about it. We have a lot of leaders that don't know how to preach outside of Psalms and the Gospels mm-hmm. and, and maybe Acts and Romans sometimes. And yeah. God, there's so much things God wants to say through the lens of the scripture. You know, I even want to just challenge you as um, going forward, as you go in week by week. Don't, 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 don't just stop at John. Don't just stop at the Gospels. Keep digging into yeah. the scriptures because there, there, there is life in them. And there is there's something God... God talks to us in Colossians. Let him speak. Mm. God talks to us in Ephesians. God talks to us in Philemon. God talks to us in Habakkuk. Nahum. God talks to us in those books that sometimes we don't even... <laughs> I'm not trying to say that if they preach from it, you're more saved or you have more revelation. But just yeah. think about it. Mm-hmm. Just think about it. Here I am, by the grace of God. I'm going to turn 33 next week, Saturday. And I'm looking at the, the, the world around me. And I'm like, man, if I don't... I see God moving, but how is it translating to the context where I serve? Mm. I appreciate all of y'all. No, no, for real. I love y'all and I embrace everything that y'all are doing. But how does it translate? I have to ask the question, am I becoming what I needed to have had when I was 16, 17, 18? Have I been, am I becoming, or am I perpetuating the cycle of, of abandonment? Because I didn't have much young adults to get into my story. I didn't have much young adults to help me through my teenage years to really navigate things. And I'm talking about in my local church, Diaspora, and in and, 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 and Koga per se. It wasn't until I really got to 18 and really went to Nyack, and I'm seeing, you know, well, other than the gigs I used to do on the side, because I, I, I used to play at churches uh, every now and again in the summer. And so I'd seen other people that would save for real or save not for real. You, you see mm-hmm. that, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, but it really wasn't until you get around and you see that, okay, there is a, there's a world, there's a kingdom world. There's more than just your local church. There's, okay. more, there's more to the, and they're a part of the body of Christ too. Even if their expression is different, even if their denomination is different, they're part of the body of Christ too. I just got to love them, got to embrace them. I can find community with them. I can find solace with them. There's some, yeah, so yeah, nah. Until we divorce the old story, we're not going to really see the fullness of God's glory for real as he wants us to experience in our local bodies and in our lives, man. So that's my rant in Jesus' name, responding to Johnny's That's good, questions. bro. That's good, bro. That was amazing. Y'all just heard all them jobs he just dropped? He, yes. he said you need to divorce the old stories in order to be... Yo, like... Ezra, just make sure you quote <laughs> I am so glad. I am so glad I'm still recording right now because I w- I'm going to continue looking back at this clip because you just said some powerful stuff. 
Oh, hey, man, we got a whole part two, man. This part, we had a part one, and this, this yeah, is a part we, two, bro. We, I was just saying, man, that was really, really good. It's funny that you said that. Um, This past Sunday when I was, I was leading a worship song at my church, and I had kind of just had things die down, and I just began to speak to the people, and I was... It's just so funny that you said that. I was talking to them about how we kind of get married to the system in church or the mm. schedule. You know, you come to church Sunday morning or even I was speaking to the I was speaking to everyone, the worship team and the congregants as well. Those who were there. Um, it's like it's so traditional in many ways, you know, and every pastor's vision in one way or another is they want to grow. They want to go forward. But it's like, are you ready to make the necessary changes? Are you ready to be out of your mm. comfort zone? in order to do that. You know, um, I know it's also important to know your pastor's specific vision, right? Um, I know my pastor is, her goal is to grow into a church that is more multicultural and that is more mm. multi-generational. Um, so how does, so as the worship team, we began to look at that and we were like, okay, we're going to start implementing multicultural songs. So now we're like doing a bridge in Spanish or we're doing something contemporary. Like we're doing different things like that. Um, we're trying to, obviously things are more virtual nowadays, but as the pandemic dies down more, we're going to try and have different things where we can get different generations in, stuff like that. But anyways, I was speaking about how we kind of get married to the system of we come to church, we sing a fast song, we sing a medium paced song, and then we sing a slow song. And then, you know, there's like the moderator, you do the scriptures, the preacher comes, and then you go home, you do it all over again the next week. And I'm like, what about something new? Why 30 to 45 minutes and just stay in worship, you know, just stay at the feet of the Lord, just stay honoring God and not be so concerned about moving on or not be so concerned about staying within that religious system mm -hmm. that that tradition bro because it there's something it just mm -hmm. it's what you were talking about how we can't really experience god's glory if we're so married to an old way of doing things and not to knock what the traditional program or what the traditional schedule has been because it, it is organized in a sense but there are times and even scripture show, shows this the lord breaks the system sometimes you know he takes us out of our comfort zone sometimes and i think it's definitely a conversation that like obviously the conversation is being held but it's something that more people in church leadership need to hear, you know, like, don't be like, we're always, I don't know. I just feel like we're always in such a rush to get to the next thing on the program. Now it's like, well, everyone's worried about time. And if, you know, the pastor has the clock and if the pastor speaks past 20 minutes, people are in an uproar and it's like, or the worship team has to be timed and stuff like that. And like I said, I'm not necessarily against the structure in a sense. But when structure begins to come against what the Holy Spirit wants to do, then we have an issue. And that's definitely something we need to talk about more. But I just thought it was it was pretty cool that you had mentioned that. And it was something I was talking about before. So this was a great talk, gentlemen. Yeah, me too. I'm something I learned over the years is that you just have to practice an awareness of where and when God is in a moment yes. when we were gathered. Because yes. sometimes at the same time, because I had that same thing when I was 17. But one thing I got exposed to as I became a young adult, is that God can do it in an hour. Sometimes God may need three because there might be some things God needs to get out of our system. But sometimes God could do it in 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's how aware we are of where he is. Because yeah. if you're not careful, sometimes you'll linger where God is not. Mm. And that's the last thing you want to, that's the other form that you don't want to have happen. Because we, one form that we're divorcing ourselves from is trying to box God in. But another form of godliness that we got to also be careful, our generation has to be careful of this, especially of trying to perpetuate wh where God isn't mm. or trying to linger in a moment where God is left and God is saying, well, I, I'm actually talking now. I mean, you you all sound good. The harmonies is nice. The music is nice, but I'm actually, I am actually talking. And it's not mm. necessarily sometimes through the preaching word, but I am talking. Those mm. transactions in worship, those transactions in prayer, you know, I think if we just really get to relearning, because there's some things in the structure that we do need to relearn mm -hmm. and do right. You know, if we're going to have a shut in, we're not going to just have four hours of talking and then 15 minutes of prayer. What was the point of the shut in is that we mm -hmm. collectively get in a room and get a hold of God, just like Jacob wrestled with the angel until the Lord blessed him. You know, if we're going to worship for if our worship serves is going to be for 90 minutes, what matters? The worship, the word, and demonstration. Those are the three things that matter. And 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 if you want to talk about, I, I classify this under worship or, or helping our people into giving. Or even how we do church now. 
spend some time in giving our people life skills so that they can, because that's how you say we can re rethink church. We can re -re we can revolutionize church. What are some life skills? What are some life hacks? Like what we open up with. There's a whole reverend out here and there's a lot of other people that that's talking about handling finances. I didn't forget about you, Javier. Getting the resources to handle our money better so we can be a good resource to the body of Christ. Right. If our money is if our money is right, then we can bless more causes like we want to. You mm -hmm. know, if our mental and our physical is if, 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 if it's up to par, we can be more of a blessing. If our mental, especially we need to spend time on mental health because you know we need healing for the mind. This last year traumatized everything. Are you in the right place for healing? Does your church believe? Do you have a staff? We have to start asking these questions now. Do you have a counselor on staff? Do you have, do you have therapists on staff? Do you, does your church need it? And if you think in 2021 and beyond that the answer is no, you're going to lose the next three generations. Because the health of the mind is important just as the health of the body and the health of the spirit. So Absolutely. That, that's just some ideas. Those are just some ideas because if we don't, if we don't do it, we're good. The, the, the harvest is still there. there was, I think my devotion last week jacked me up. Um, there was never a day where God stopped being God. So that means there was never a day when there wasn't a harvest to be reaped for his honor and glory. But it's just, would you position yourself to be light? Bishop Jake said it. It's easy to be light when there's light all around you. The challenge is to be light in dark places. So we we have the resources. We just have to connect. We just have to believe in what God's given us and keep going and keep building. Absolutely. I love this talk, man. Y'all, y'all let it, y'all, y'all, y'all. Yeah, man, we could, bless me. We could definitely say and expound it keep going for sure. I, I think it's so important, Josh, uh, Manny, and as um, y'all are coming up, um, that y'all don't get caught up in the culture and a broken cycle, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want y'all, I want y'all to be solution-based as well, right? If yes. Ideas, all right, what, what can we do different? Don't just state the problem, all right? but how can the problem be fixed? And I, I challenge you, speak to your leaders, right? Not in a disrespectful manner, but and challenge them. Right? This, this is what I think. Th these are my thoughts. This is what God has revealed to me. This is what I've been praying about. Um, how about we mm. do this differently? How about we try this? I challenge y'all to do that. And if they question you why you're doing it, tell them Brother Gervais sent you or told you to do it. That's fine. I'll take the heat. But that's fine. That is, ask them questions. I ask them what their plans are. Um, and, and because we don't want, I'm seeing it already, right? That, mm -hmm. it, keep continuing the cycle. My generation is struggling. Right? Yeah. Your generation, I, I feel, and as a youth leader, because that depth is not there, um, mm -hmm. y'all are, and it has nothing necessarily to do with age, but um, for, for some, in my church especially, that depth isn't there. And that the pandemic exposed that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing, mm -hmm. ah, one is in the right, going off in different directions. How do we? reach them? How do we draw them? So much to the point, I was praying the other day, Lord, show me the blueprint. How do I minister and really be effective with these young people? Um, what's going to work? What's not working? Right? And so uh, I want y'all, I'm imploring y'all to be solutions based and talk to God about it. What can we be do different? Ezra, don't just be tired of it, right? But, but be an Isaiah in this time. Here I am, Lord, send me, right? Be available. God, what can I do? Right? What, how can I help? How can I be a part of the solution? And I think that's so. Mm. Yeah, bro. It's I just funny that you said that. There's this pastor I follow. His name is Pastor YPJ. But he posted something the other day. That's it my said, dude. That's my dude. It was so dope. It says, "If all we preach about is what's wrong with the church, then we are also what's wrong with the church. Mm -hmm. Rebuke without rebuilding leaves nothing but ruin. Discipline without instruction becomes more abusive than corrective." The wise offer solutions, not just criticism. And I feel like that yes. tied in perfectly with what you said. So definitely going to remember that, man. Yeah, that was powerful. Not to hold it. I'm sorry. I know it's 104. But Nate, I think the conversation also needs to go to um, how do we not perpetuate that cycle? Because I, I think that's also part of it. We don't know how not to because we've been doing it for so long, right? That's all mm -hmm. we kind of know. 
wrong. So I, I think mm-hmm. that's a needed conversation as well. How do we, um, how do we think differently? How do we in- expand our vision, right? Mm-hmm. How do we think outside the box? How do we get creative and, and, and do things a little bit different? I think that's it's a necessary. crazy. Yo, that's crazy, bro. Because you know, as you said, I'm not to cut you off. I'm sorry about that. No, is, you saying that? <laughs> I, I was talking to Ryan uh, <laughs> after I joined a little bit last week. It's crazy that we could have answered that question 10 years ago. Now, I'm not going to try to perpetuate what was and say, oh, man, we can't do it ever. No, no, no. It's crazy that you're saying this now because we're looking at it as we're entering our 30s and moving into the 30s. And we're like, wait a minute. This thing is not this thing is not just an individual basis because a lot of years we were fed to believe, well, it's because your friend didn't love the Lord so much. Well, it's because mm-hmm. they let life get to them. Oh, wait a minute. But life gets to us too. Right. We, we, you know, yeah. we, we have to confront a systemic evil of us pushing and, and throwing people out because they might have fallen. We might need to just learn what the doctrine of grace is for real, for real. Because if you ask that across the board, I'm just saying, some of it is doctrine on how we set up, how we systemically approach church and how we approach mm-hmm. kingdom. Because to be honest, you know, one of the things I'm going to always credit Maurice's leadership for was that he pointed in the directions beyond even Koga. Yeah. We were blessed. Yeah. Me, you, Jave, we were blessed. Yeah. And man, you caught the tail end of it. You, I don't know yeah. if Ezra or Joshua got to see uh, much of his poor in the youth leader standpoint. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, because he let us see, okay, certain things are possible. Mm-hmm. just beyond the church realm. I can be, my sister's influenced by my race. I can be a marriage counselor for Jesus. Right. When 20 years ago, people would have downed her because you can't be no single person talking about marriage. You huh. can't be no single person talking. I'm just saying, these were stigmas that we're beat. Jave, we are beating some stigmas, but yeah. there are still some grave stigmas that we still have to conquer so that when Manny, Josh, and Ezra, assume leadership in whatever capacity, not just in the church, but in the world, mm-hmm. we're not perpetuating a systemic cycle of, well, um, they just fell out because they faded. No, you didn't have a, you didn't have a system of discipleship in place. Right. You didn't empower your leaders to be disciple makers. Right. Let's confront that. You know, certain things like that. Like, let, let's confront what we didn't establish in the last 10 years so that by the time, Lord Tari, by the time 2030 come around, we're saying to ourselves, okay, this body, Koga specifically, okay, it's in a better place because we're more connected, because we, we've, we've, we've divorced old narratives, and, but we're sticking true to the scriptures. What we're doing is ancient. What we're doing is ancient, but how we, our methodology has to change. Paul Hutchinson said that it's a group of youth leaders, y'all. In 2006, I still have the notebook from the conference. I was a senior in high school, 2006. She said this. I was on my way to college. I was in Ezra's seat and Josh's Josh's seat, basically. And I'm hearing these revolutionary thoughts that if our body married some of these ideas or created conduits so that these leaders would have expression and not be a and not have to. I'm not saying that we didn't need to go to YouTube and not go to use our technology. But if there wasn't such a stigma with us branching out, huh. I think we would have. And I think this is the good thing. Like another good thing about this quarantine. Yeah, you're going to have to branch out regardless because you might you might go back to a local church that might not even be anymore. You might have to collab with another church. You might have to. Huh. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be negative, Nancy, but we huh. didn't have a lot of stuff in place. So we don't have huh. we don't have um, the, 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 the things in place to sustain for our children. We're not supposed to just be having church for us. My bishop says that all the time. Our ministry is for generations um, unborn, generations present and unborn. Because until wow. Jesus comes, he says the story, the heritage of the Lord. And it's crazy. We say it all the time in baby dedication, but really didn't realize how powerful the text is. He says children are in heritage of the Lord. So as long as children are being born, the story of the Lord still has to be told. Mm. Now, God determines when that ends, obviously, because he's the beginning and ending. He knows when that is. You know what I'm saying? He knows when he's coming back. He's got that under control. But as long as there's children in youth, that means the story of the Lord. So for those that are youth leadership, 
take that as encouragement. The story of the Lord is still being told. But if we're not creating atmospheres where that happens, we can be disregarding a whole st story of the Lord. <laughs> we, we could be digging our own graves because if you stop growing, you stop living. Mm -hmm. There's no need to grow if you're not living. <laughs> Does anybody else want to stay on this call and continue to hear Brother Nate speak? <laughs> Can I get an amen in the house? I'm actually, uh, Josh, yeah. guess At what? At 11. It's, What's up? Yeah. It's one of the people, I, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I've been, somebody was saying to me, yo, you've been sharing certain people a lot in the last year. They're like, you've been sharing a lot of Stevenson. You've been sharing a lot of Dr. Caroline Leaf. And about, no, mm -hmm. let me tell you, Dr. Caroline Leaf, her switch app program, like literally saved my mind towards the end of 2020 because I felt mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, I was going to crackle under a lot of pressure. What's her but name? Dr. Caroline Leaf. Caroline. So she's doing a webinar. Yeah, she's doing a webinar. Uh, this South African neuroscientist, she's a Christian, um, and, this is, um, and it's amazing. And I, I think it's so inspiring. One of the things she was saying um, was that if we do healthy detoxes on our mind daily, we can really, our mind can improve our brain function up to 75%. Like if we're mm -hmm. constantly detoxing our mind. But I'm like, isn't that something? The Bible mm -hmm. says that in Romans chapter 12. Mm. It's just now you're hearing it in a practical sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. hearing it in a scientific sense. And science explains explain God when you credit him the glory for it, obviously. Right. But, you know, that's another conversation, too. But it's just crazy that, you know, wait a minute. This is Romans chapter 12 playing out. So I'm going to a webinar that she's hosting. Um, I wish the registration wasn't full. I would have just said, y'all could tag on with my ticket and just come on in. But the registration is full. But it, it's the health mm. of the mind. These are the things okay. that the body of Christ need to have conversations about. So when mm -hmm. you were talking about it, I was like, yeah, I, I'm on a, I think I'm on the right path. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a psychologist. I'm not what my sister does. My sister is a, a marriage and, 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 and um, family counselor with, mm -hmm. with a, a BA in psychology. She just got a master's in, you know, I'm proud of her. But we need more people like that in the field. They can adjust the health of the mind for the structures mm -hmm. so that we have healthier structures. Well, man, I'm, I'm tired I'm tired of the single mom dynamic low key, you know and, the, and, the, and, and I'm tired also of the dynamic where we as brothers mm -hmm. are you know perpetuating a bad narrative I'm tired of it that's that you want to say what are you tired of Nate I'm tired of of people trashing good men number one but I'm also tired of us being underdeveloped mm -hmm. and over platformed and we traumatize sometimes I had to. I had to tell the Lord, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna hold you. I, I, I was like, I was an idiot. I, I was young and dumb. I had some platforms, and I thought that was just a good enough reason, you know, to just go for certain things or go for certain relationships. I'm sorry, Lord. I was dumb. My bad. <laughs> I mm -hmm. repent. I wasn't thinking clear. But if we can get men, I, I, I think that's one of the things that God is dealing with me and talking to me about personally. If we can just really build up our brothers from young. And build up our brothers to, to, to really be the leaders. I really believe, and there's so much God has to say to us brothers and, and wants to help mm -hmm. us be better. And I like conversations like this. I'm not saying that the sisters don't matter because we're about to enter Women's History Month, obviously, and we need a place for them. All right, I'm gonna throw another gem at you. I'm gonna throw something else at you. How is it, how is it that in the year of our Lord 2021, we only have, we can probably count on our hands in our organization how many women are actually ministers, how many women are actually ministers. Why is there a vacuum 21 years into the 21st century? How is it that there's still a vacuum for women in ministry? How is it that some of us, there are still some people in COGOP. I had to confront a brother about this at a men's retreat a couple of years ago that was adamant. Ain't no woman gonna pass to me. And I was like, you're hmm. not fit, you're not fit to grow. I'm talking about anybody. They had this ideology. They're not from New York, but they, they were saying, nah, ain't no woman pastor me. It's not biblical. Where? Where does where is it not biblical? They run to the first Timothy scripture. Yeah, and that's cute. That's like, do, do you know the context of it? And they can't see when you when you start to ask certain questions, they can't answer it beyond the, the I'm I'm just trying to hear what you're trying to say. That's why I ask questions. That's why I'm inquisitive. I want to see if you understand what you really understand it. Mm -hmm. Because 
That's not the point. There are many powerful women. Uh, I don't see scriptures about female apostles. No, you didn't study the life of Junior. You, you, you didn't study the life of Junior. You, you, you didn't study the life of Deborah, who was serving as a typology. Uh, you, that you, didn't, you didn't study Esther. Esther, a woman of influence. Esther's story does not have the word. If you read the book of Esther, there's not a mention of the word God per se in the book. But you, that book is just as godly in the canon as the other 65 books. What's powerful about that book? She used her influence to preserve her people mm. so that the story of Christ, the story of the Messiah would be handled carefully. Oh, really? Who did that? A woman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, these are conversations that, you know, you, if you're really looking at it like, man, we can really dive in. Not, I, I, I'm telling y'all, how is it that, how is it that, how is it that, how is it that, how is it that my mom, my 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 my, my not my mom, how is it that that um let's say for example, how is it that you know Dr. Dr. Jessica Price, I know she's such a gift. How is she, how is she not uh, how's there not more platforms for her to be a, and the gifts that she has, the healing and miracles? How is that not manifest? These some sometimes these are questions that be be jogging in my mind when I really mm -hmm. sit down and think about it. That how is it we're gonna enter Women's History Month and there's such a vacuum for female pastors? Mm -hmm. That you can definitely count on your hand. How is it still a vacuum? We have so much daughters that have been injured by poor church culture, poor church teaching that were preachers, mm -hmm. that were evangelists, that were apostles, that were pastors, that were gifts, psalmists all over the place, but they weren't handled correctly. Mm -hmm. We let them burn out. Just like some of our brothers, some of my peers, we just let them burn out. And now some of them, some of them now no. Some of them now are in better ministries and are being better taken care of. And I'm like, dang, if our house just had housed these gifts right. right. Yeah. If we had just told them it was okay to take a break without them feeling condemnation. Right. If we just told them it's okay if you don't come to church for two weeks in a row because you're studying for finals. We know, matter of fact, we're going to put you on a, you're not going <laughs> to, it's not just going to be the shut-ins we pray for in our prayer time. Church. We're going to pray for you. Because we're invested in your success. When you succeed, the body of Christ succeeds where you serve. So more conversations to be had that if we do this, we can heal. We can really help bring healing to our body and, and, and accelerate because we're behind. Organizationally, we're behind. God can catch us up. God is in control. If we yield to him organizationally, if we yield to him on a local level, on the district level, however, wherever you serve. God can do some things. I, I, I enjoy watching Joshua flow in worship. I enjoy, um, I enjoy seeing uh, uh, Jave hosting this. I enjoy seeing Ezra doing what he's doing. I, I enjoy that Manny is a student and, and, and continuing to grow and continuing to, to lean and grow in the prophetic. You, you have that Glory House International. That's a good house to be connected to, man. I love the Cross yeah. family. I love them. I love, I love them. They're, they're so real. Mel, Dr. Hey. Mel, um, Dr. Melvin, Dr. Ash, they're amazing people. You know, you're connected to some That's good right. folk up there. I'm just saying, like, this, if we just even get connected a little bit more amongst us, mm -hmm. like, you know, why we, not? We, we, yeah, why and not? it don't have to be cold out. I think we've divorced that narrative, but I think what happens is, is that we've divorced that narrative to the point where we don't want to try and come back and bless our house. Mm -hmm. That's why our sister organization, the Church of God, is still thriving. Let me tell you something, Ashley Ramsey. Um, one of my sisters in Christ, she's from Church of God, but okay. you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know, you know, just looking at the content she puts out, how she advanced in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, Prophetess Sham, Shambray um, Rob from Jamaica, she's Church of God, she's from my sister organization, but you wouldn't know mm -hmm. because of the love that they flow, but also how they're connected. I think mm -hmm. one of the things that's breaking, and I'm so glad it's breaking, but I just don't want the extreme, the other extreme to happen, the other string of the pendulum, that everyone's going there, but they're mm -hmm. not building their house. That's something me and my, my bro John we covenanted with. Like, listen, I don't mind. I don't mind sitting under some different preaching from time to time. I don't mind going to different webinars. I'm about to do it in a few minutes. I don't mind doing that. But if it's not going to build me up and build up the house that I'm serving, what is you know? Until God says it's time to move, you're a part of building the house where you are. Mm -hmm. And I got to give you kudos, Josh. I didn't tell you that before. There's not many young people that can articulate the vision of the house. 
Thank you. And it's not because it's in your lineage, but I respect it because there's not many people that can articulate what's the vision of the church. Because to be honest, mm-mm, not gonna, I'm not you, you fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> There's no vision the people perish, but if you can articulate the vision, the story of God continues. I'll say mm-hmm. it like that. All right. Story of God must continue. The story of God must continue. Must continue. And with with you saying that, um, brother, doing the right thing. You know, it's crazy. My vo- one of my former vocal coaches said, if anybody's singing, they need to start incorporating green apples into their diet. And I'm like, mm. why? Because they're like, well, the sourness that comes with the green apple is good for the hydration of your vocal cords. And I said, wow, I didn't even know that. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. There's the, you know, and, and, and so, you know, those that sing and, you know, but for your wife, Jave, and, you know, if you know anybody else, yeah, they're saying yeah, you should incorporate green apples in your diet for, for that reason. I was like, I didn't know that. Because sour helps, especially in the moment, sour helps. That's why some singers have sour patches with them but right before they sing mm. that's kind of the why yeah opera singers opera singers have sip on coke because there's something in that causes the right the healthy amount of phlegm to come up so that they they can execute those different ranges wow but that's yeah like, i need that Got it's it. a Got green it. apple i didn't know that so they're like yeah incorporate green apple in, into into your diet you know and i'm like okay I was like, didn't, didn't know that. I was like, that, yeah. that's crazy. So that's why, Ezra, I gotta keep, I gotta keep the vessel for t- even for preaching, bro, bro. Even for preaching, if you can, especially the winter months when the weather be so funny, uh-huh. it's, it's good to, yeah, it's good. Whatever you preach or exhort, I like that. Yeah, uh, I, I got, I know it's been a minute. I gotta jump off. I'm pretty sure y'all do too. But no, I yeah, definitely yeah. But um. Uh, two things I want to leave it leave out with um, Manny, Ezra, and Josh, and, and Nate said it, um, and I've learned this a while ago. When you're studying scripture, right, mm-hmm. just look at the content, right? Mm-hmm. But look at the context in which that content is written, right? So that mm-hmm. you can get an overall understanding of the whole story. And especially for y'all that y- y'all are coming up, y'all are preaching, right? Um, yeah. Understand the full story, right? So not just the content, but the context in which that yeah. is, right? And the second thing, um, th- this is not a conversation for now, but I definitely agree with, with Nate regarding the financial literacy. Um, mm-hmm. Church, but for us as Black men, um, mm-hmm. a, a lot of stuff, we, we don't learn this stuff in school, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and y'all are, I know Manny, you graduated high school, but as in, and Josh, they're about to graduate. And it, this is important for you too, Manny, as an up and coming young adult. Mm-hmm. And you understand financial literacy, right? Um, that I, I'm all for the drip. I'm all for it, yeah. right? But, but we, we can make better decisions at mm-hmm. 19 and 20 that will set us up when we reach 25 and 26. Because w- when we're 19 and 20, mm-hmm. we don't look at 27, 28, 29. Right, right. Look at 19 and 20, right? And mm-hmm. we enjoy that moment. And sometimes we make a decisions or we make decisions financially being 19 mm-hmm. and 20 that set us back five, 10 years, right? And so we spend mm-hmm. the instead of, instead of building the next five years to set you up when mm-hmm. you're 27, 28, you're ending up having to repair what you did at 19, 20, 20 mm-hmm. years, right? And mm-hmm. so that conversation is, is necessary. Um, definitely want to expose you guys to investing, right? And, and what that looks like. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Feel free to lean on me. I work for an invest, investment bank now, so feel free to lean on me. And actually, oh, dope! And and I'll do my best um, as I'm learning to be a, a source, of, you know, a resource for you guys in terms of information, but also understanding that 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 market, that avenue, right? Um, I just I'm not you know I'm not seasoned in it, but I, I do have a good understanding. Of, and I'm able to expose you to other stuff. It's not just stocks out there, right? There's mm-hmm. so many different investment vehicles mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Right, that you can engage in, right? And, and how to build your portfolio, right? What does that look like? Um, it's not mm-hmm. just about working a, a nine to five, right? I want you guys to think bigger than that, right? Mm-hmm. It's not all about gaining money too. I'm not, I want to tell you about it's money, 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 money. No, but 
Um, eventually, one day you guys are gonna have families, right? Or you have goals financially that you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be uh, biblically sound and, and a, a servant of God, uh, but have your finances in order. Right? Mm-hmm. I believe God calls us to excel in every single area of our life, not just the spiritual. Mm-hmm. Follow, as you said that, Jave. If subscribe to this YouTube page, I did it recently. And I'm on a, I feel on a trajectory to do some great things. Follow his and her money. His and her money. That man, not only are they Christian, but these guys are millionaires also. Christian millionaires. We need a couple more down the earth before time, time is no more. You know? Yeah. Believe it and declare it over your life. But also at the same time, they give you those notes for discipline. They give you some good notes. You might say, wait, I'm not there yet. No, no, take the notes now. Because for me, if somebody had this conversation with me, so well, thank you, Lord, for answering that prayer. Um, if somebody had the conversation with me, to be, yep, 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 yeah. isn't her, yep, isn't her money, yep. If if somebody had that conversation with me at 19, uh-huh. I wouldn't have accrued so much debt that I did throughout my 20s that I'm still, I thank God that the credit score is in a much better place. Mm-hmm. But around my 25th birthday, eight years ago, I, I'm not Jack ashamed up. to admit that. I ain't ashamed <laughs> to admit that. There was so much thing denied to me at that time because it was such a big deal. So mm-hmm. definitely take the notes, take the resources. I appreciate that, bro. I might hit you up too. You might yeah. need to just have a conversation Thanks. with Javay about that. Let the body of Christ see that Javay just ain't a youth leader and, and a preacher and husband. Let him see that this man is doing something in the in, in the world to help bless the kingdom with investment banking. Yeah, that's dope. That's so, nah, that so that's another thing too, right? Just just thinking mm-hmm. outside the box, having multiple streams of income. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's something to talk about another time. But I've made mistakes too with credit card and, and debt and all that stuff. And, and so if we can help you, Nate, me and Nate, whoever, you know, to, to mm-hmm. avoid those pitfalls and those setbacks, then you know, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I, I definitely want to see you guys succeed, not just in, in ministry. Right, but in mm-hmm. your personal lives as well, in your finances, right? Yeah. As black men cannot settle for mediocrity, right? No. We can excel, right? Beyond measure, right? Um, in our career, in our finances, right? And of course, um, bringing that back to bless the kingdom of God. Right? Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, like, subscribe if you're new, turn your post notification, and share the video with other people so they can see it. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys. <laughs>